bulk of kind of the sermon time today. If you're new here, it's very rare for us not to have a, a full sermon. We do pretty much every other week of the year, but but uh, I do just have a small kind of short mini sermon for you this morning, and then I'm going to call up Teen Challenge and give them the remainder of the time. After Thanksgiving, we will start a sermon series on prayer, and we'll also start up a church-wide small groups session on prayer, studying the Lord's Prayer, and I hope you'll join us when the time comes and hear more about that when it comes. Right now, for six or seven minutes, I want to give you a, a vision of prayer for our church that you may hear more of after Thanksgiving. And specifically, I'd like to encourage us to start learning to pray on the spot more frequently. Often we'll hear of a need for prayer and we will say, I'll pray for you. And hopefully we do remember later on to pray for that person, but sometimes we forget to pray for them later. Either way, why not change from saying, I'll pray for you, to, can I pray for you right now? 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Colossians 4.2 says, Continue steadfastly in prayer. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray at all times in the Spirit. And Romans 12.12 says, Be constant in prayer. One of the ways to pray without ceasing, continue steadfastly in prayer, pray at all times, be constant in prayer, is to be ready to stop, pause, and pray at any moment. When you hear a need, rather than saying, I'll pray later, say, can I pray for you right now? Let me pray for you right now. As a teenager, I remember listening to the song by Stephen Curtis Chapman called Let Us Pray, in which he says, I hear you say your heart is aching. You've got trouble in the making, and you ask if I'll be praying for you, please. <laughs> and in keeping with convention, I say yes with good intentions to pray later, making mention of your needs. But since we have this moment here at heaven's door, we should start knocking now. What are we waiting for? Let us pray, let us pray. Everywhere in every way, every moment of the day, it is the right time. For the Father above, he is listening with love, and he wants to answer us, so let us pray. So here's my vision for us as a church family, that we regularly stop, pause, and pray. When we hear of a need or a concern in someone's life, our first response should be to stop, pause, and pray. Our first response isn't to try to solve the problem or to minimize the problem or to change the subject or just say, I'll pray later, but to immediately pray. Don't just plan to pray later. You can do that too, but pray right then and there. As a kid, we all heard the fire safety lesson that if your clothes ever catch on fire, you should stop, drop, and roll. What I'm saying today is that if we have a concern, we should stop, pause, and pray. If you can remember stop, drop, and roll, you can remember stop, pause, and pray. And here's another suggestion, my vision for us as a church family that I heard suggested at a conference I think would be great for us. Let's get in the habit of putting our hand on each other's shoulders when we stop, pause, and pray. Laying hands on someone is a biblical practice. It was normal in the Bible. For example, when the little children came to Jesus, many of you know the passage, it says he put his hands on them and blessed them. There's nothing magical about putting your hand on someone's shoulder, but it can be very encouraging for that person and can be a good practice to get in the habit of doing. Physical touch can be strengthening and encouraging to, to people. I just recommend men do this with men and women with women so no one gets uncomfortable and ask first so the person isn't surprised. But don't be shy. Put your hand right on their shoulder and stop, pause, and pray right on the spot. This is very, very simple. When you're chatting with someone and you hear that they're discouraged or they have a job interview coming up or they're sick or they're going through a hard time or they have a big test at school or something happened at work yesterday or they're apprehensive about next week or the topic of an unsaved family member or friend comes up or a hundred other possible things, rather than saying, I'll pray for you, you say, can I pray for you right now? And they'll say yes, and you say, can I put my hand on your shoulder? And they'll say yes, and you put your hand on your shoulder, and you stop, pause, and pray right then and there. Afterwards, the person will likely say thank you, and then you can continue on talking to them or continue talking to the next person you were planning to talk to. This can all take place in 30 seconds in the foyer, after church, downstairs during Connection Cafe, in the parking lot, when you're at someone's house during the week and you're visiting with them, when you bump into someone at the mall and you get chatting for a few minutes and you hear about a need, instead of saying, I'll pray for you later, say, can I pray for you right now? 
One of the ways to pray without ceasing, continue steadfastly in prayer, pray at all times, and be constant in prayer, is to be ready to stop, pause, and pray at any moment. When you hear a need, rather than saying, I'll pray later, say, let me pray for you right now. Elders and deacons and other men in the church, I'd like to encourage you to be the leaders. Set the example in this area, stopping and pausing and praying for other people. When a need or concern comes up and you're standing in the middle of the foyer or downstairs during Connection Cafe. And women, look for opportunities to do this with other women. And if the men around here fail to set a good example, perhaps the ladies around here could be the ones setting the example of stopping, pausing, and praying rather than just planning to pray later on and hopefully remembering but sometimes forgetting to pray. Maybe it will feel a little bit awkward or forced the first few times, but I think it could become a part of our culture here and become natural and helpful and encouraging and become a wonderful practice to regularly see people around here with their heads bowed, stopping, pausing, and praying for a moment. And maybe see more answers to prayer as well then. Let's pray and then I'll call up Teen Challenge. Heavenly Father, help us to have, have the courage to stop and pause and pray right on the spot when we hear of, hear of needs that people have, Lord. Encourage us to, to do this, we pray. And may we see more answers to prayer as well and people being encouraged and strengthening, strengthened through your Spirit, strengthening them in, in response to our prayers. And now, Lord, we pray for Teen Challenge as they come and share with us. Lord, open our hearts to, uh, to learn more about this ministry and to continue to support it, we pray. Be with them as they speak and give their testimonies and share with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So come on up, Brian. Those of you that haven't met Brian, you'll uh, you'll, you'll meet him now. You